According to a web design survey, more than 73% of the web designers believe that a non-responsive design is one of the top reasons why visitors leave a website. Hence, as a web developer, it's really very important for you to focus not just on the desktop layout but on the mobile layout as well. But if you have been running away from it, then this video is what you need to watch right now. Hi guys, my name is Itisha. Welcome to my channel. If you are new here or have been watching and enjoying the videos on this channel so far, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. So today in this video, we are going to build this responsive website using HTML and Tailwind CSS. Not just this, we'll also be adding these animations to our website. So by the end of it, I'm quite sure that you would say how easy it was. So without any further delay, let's dive in. So I've already set up this project and I've also installed Tailwind CSS in it. I have titled it Responsive Website HTML and Tailwind CSS. So the image that I'm going to use in this project is saved in the assets folder within the public folder with the name wfa.jpg. Now let's have a look at what we need to build. Here we are going to take the mobile first approach, meaning we are first going to create the mobile layout and then head on to building the desktop layout by making changes to it. We'll be using the breakpoints provided by Tailwind CSS, which you will learn gradually while building the project and see how easy it is to convert a mobile layout into a desktop one. So let me minimize this and make it according to a mobile. Okay, this should be fine. Now, the first thing that we can see in here is there is a background color that is given to the whole website. So for adding this background color, I will be using hypercolor.dev. So this is a really cool website. So great shout out to Jordi and Mark for creating this. So they have created several gradient colors we, which we can simply copy from here and paste it in our project. So this is the one that we are going to use called Sky C. So I'll copy the code from here. And within the body, here I'll give it a class and paste it over here. Okay. Within this body, we are going to create a div in order to give the rest of the settings like viewport height, padding and all. So I'll give it a minimum height of screen and save. Okay, let's see. Okay, we can see that a background color is added. Let me also make it according to a mobile size. Okay, this is fine. Now the next thing that we can observe in here is there is a padding that is given from top and bottom and also from left and right. So to this div itself, we'll give it a px of 6 and a py of 3. Okay. The first thing that we are going to create is this header. So in this header, we have a logo and also an icon. So in real websites, this icon is clickable and whenever we click on it, we get a drop down of all the navigation items. But since we are creating it in HTML and Tailwind CSS, this is going to be a static uh, icon this is not going to work but if you want to build a responsive one i have made a separate video on how to create a responsive navigation bar using html tailwind css and javascript so you can refer to that video the link of it is given on the top and also in the description box down below so first we'll create that so here uh, in this div i'm going to create a header within this i'm going to have a a tag i'll keep it empty for now and I will create a h1 inside it i'll call it wfa and after this a tag i'll also create a div which will take care of the icon so this icon i'm going to take from font awesome icon library this is generally called a bar icon so let's search for it yeah this is the one we are going to use i'm pasting it here we also need to import the cdn link of it so let's search for cdnjs of font awesome icon library this first one is fine and paste it in the head section okay now let's see yeah we have our logo as well as an icon but you can see that the background color that we have given to the whole website is darker so we'll be using a lighter color for all the text and it's going to be mostly white so instead of giving it individually to all the p tags h1 and all we will rather give it in the body itself so we'll give it a text of white okay yeah now the visibility is better so we want these two side by side and also apart from each other since uh, whenever we want any two items or more than two items side by side we generally use the property of flex and since they both need to be set apart we'll be using the property of justify between so to this header, I'm going to give it a class of flex and a property of justify between. Okay. 
yeah now we can see that they are set apart we also need to add styling to these two so first we'll go to this a tag i'll give it a class of flex and item center why i'm doing so because i want it vertically in the center so i've given this and also to this h1 i want to make it bigger so i'll give it a size of 4xl and a font of bold so that it looks like that it's a logo and also this i uh, icon that we have imported i will make it bigger so i'll use it fa of 2x if you want to make even more bigger you can use 3x 4x and so on and so forth and save it yeah so our header is ready now the next thing that we are going to create is the main section so in the main section we have this image and we have certain text in this text we have a heading we have a form and also some icons that we need to use so uh, first let's create this main section so we'll come outside this header section create a main section in here the first is going to be a div in which we are going to keep the image the source of it is going to be assets and this is the one and we'll uh, keep the alt as work from anywhere and we'll add a class to it later first let's see how it is appearing Okay, this looks fine, but you can see that there is no gapping in between the header and the main section. So instead of giving a margin top, what we can use, we can use a gap property. So to this outer div, I will give it a flex column property. And with flex comes a property called gap. So we'll give it a gap of 10. Yeah, now we can see that this is looking better. Also to this image, we also uh, need to add an outline to it, uh, outline of white color and also some shadows also there. So first I will keep it in the center. So I'll be using the flex property item center justify center it's always uh, safe to use a flex property in here because when we'll go to a larger screen it might appear here and there but in order to make it uh, like in the center we can use this and to this image i'm going to use a outline of white color so i'll be using outline white and also a shadow of 2xl Apart from that, I will also give the shadow color of black. Okay. Yeah, now we can see that this is looking fine. Now let's create this div which will contain all of these things. So outside it, we'll create another div. In this, the first div will contain two H1 tags. So I'll create these two separately. First is let switch and second is to remote. So we will write that quickly. Let's switch. And then there is an H1 which says to remote. Okay. And then after that, we have a P tag which says all of this thing, the description of the website that we are building. And after that, we have a form. Let's keep the action as none for now. And within this form, the first is an input field, which requires you to enter the city. And then there is a button which says find your office. So first we'll create an input. The type is going to be text. Let's keep the placeholder as enter city. Okay. And I think that's fine. Okay. We'll add the class later. And after that, we have a button which says find your office. Okay. The last uh, section that we need to create is used by these companies text. So I'll create another div for it. So after this form, I'll create a div in which I have a P tag which says this. And then after that, we have certain icons of the companies that have been using uh, the services provided by this website so let me quickly make this so i'm going to create an unordered list within this i have certain list items we just need these icons so again we are going to use the font awesome icon library you can simply search these icons so first one is for twitter i'll create one for now and rest you can copy in a similar manner so in order to save some time i have already written them in advance let's save it and see yeah now we have all the text in here we have the form items as well as the icons 
So before styling these individually, we first need to observe one more thing that there is a gapping in between all of these divs. So how we can add that? So we'll be using the property of space of Y or space of X whenever we want to give any horizontal or vertical uh, gapping in between the divs that we have created. So to this outer div, I'm going to use the space of Y of around six. This will give the spaces in between these elements. Yeah, now you can see that there is some gapping, but also we also need to give some spacing between uh, this image and also the first heading that we have. So what we are going to use in here is a margin top. You can also in the main section, give it a flex column property and give it a gapping just like how we have given on the outer div, but there is also an alternate to it. You can simply use the margin top of around 16 and save. Yeah, now we can see that there is a good amount of spacing between these elements. Now let's first uh, style this one. Let's switch to remote. So to this outer div, we'll first give it a property of text of 7XL. I can give it individually to all the H1s, but since I have a parent div, I'll instead give it to that. I'll give it a font of bold and leading of text. Now, once this is done to this H1, we do not need to give any styling. We'll save it and go back to our website. Yeah, now this is looking fine. So this P is fine, we'll not play around with it, but we'll play around with this form. Now to this form, we can see that these two elements are kept one below the other, but in a general form, these elements are kept side by side. So how we can make them one below the other? So again, we'll be using the property of flex in here. So I'll give it a property of flex, use flex column property, give it a gap of two so that there is some gapping in between these two elements and save it. Yeah, now we can see that they are one below the other. Now, first to this input field, let's add some classes. Since we want its corner to be rounded, so I'll give it a rounded of MD. And also I'll give it some padding. So I'll give it a PX of four and a PY of three and save. Yeah, now it's looking better. But whenever I'm typing in it, I'm not able to see anything. Why? Because I have used the text of white in my like within the body. So instead I need to override that white color with the black color. So I'll give it a text of black. Now when we will write it, we can see the text that we are writing in it. Okay, this looks fine. Next to this find your office button, let's make it uh, so that it looks like a button. So first I'll give it a background color. So I'll give it a background purple of 900. Also, we need to give a padding. So I'll give the same padding as above PX of four PY as three and also a rounded off MD. Okay. Yeah, now it's looking better. Okay. Uh, let's make it a bit bigger as well. So I'll give the font as medium. Also, I do not want that when I shrink the screen, this text should go on the next line. This find your office should go on the next line. For example, find remains on the one line and your office goes in the next line. So I'll be using the property of white space no wrap. It helps in not letting the text go in the next line. Okay, and save it. Yeah, now it's looking perfectly fine. Now let's work on this used by these companies section. So to this div, we'll give it a flex column property so that we can use the gap property in order to give some gapping in between these two things, the paragraph and all the allies that we have created. So I'll give it a gap of around four. To this P tag, we'll make it a bit heavy. So we'll use a font of semi bold. Now to this unordered list, you can see that right now, all these elements are stacked one below the other, but we want them side by side. So we need to use the property of flex, give them a gap of six. Okay. Yeah. Now we can see that they have come side by side, but they are really very small. So let's make them a bit bigger. So just like how we have made the bar icon bigger. Similarly, we'll make them bigger by using FA of 2x in all the icons that we have used. Yeah, now it's looking perfectly fine. Uh, also, if you want, you can also add more padding so that this find your office button and used by these companies is a little bit apart. So here we'll use instead of PY of eight. Oh, gap of four. Okay. 
yeah now it's shifted a bit so this is looking much better okay so we are done building the mobile layout now it's time to head on to the desktop layout but before that if we go within the documentation and go in responsive design you can see that there are several breakpoints that are there which are generally used like sm md lg xl to xl so generally sm and below are used for a mobile layout md is used for a tablet layout lg and above are used for desktop layout so let's see if we move from like the mobile layout to md screen if there are, are any changes in our website that we need to incorporate so it's around 768 so if we move from a mobile layout to around 768 we can see some changes so if we move from here to here you can see that the padding is increased so first we need to cater that so in this div initially the padding was six so when we move to the medium screen we need to increase the padding from left and right so i'll give the px as 10 okay that's one thing apart from that uh, we can also observe that initially uh, these two form items were kept one below the other but now they are kept side by side so in order to achieve that we'll go inside this form so on the MD screen, I want them side by side. So I'll uh, use the flex row property. Also, there is no gapping in between them, which was initially two. So we'll give the gap as zero. Let's also increase this to the same breakpoint. Yeah, we can see that now they are kept side by side. Also, this rounded property that we had used earlier was there for all the corners. But now on the medium screen for the input box, it's only on the left and like in the button, it's only on the right. So there is a, a really nice way to achieve this. So this rounded property need to be applicable only up to medium screen. So we'll be using the max MD property. That means maximum up to medium screen, this rounded MD will be applicable. And as and when we'll touch the medium screen, we want this rounded property to be applied only on the left. So I'll use L. Similarly, in this button, this will be applicable to maximum MD. And as we'll touch the MD screen, I forgot to use the semicolon. I want this rounded to be applied only on the right. Uh, okay. Round of, uh, right of MD. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can observe now that this is now uh, perfectly fine. Let me move myself here. And as I'm moving from this screen to this screen, uh, this rounded property is only applied wherever we want them to be. Okay. Also, this input box is a bit small. So on the medium screen, I'll give it a specific width. So I'll give it a width of around 80. So whenever you want to specify certain properties on certain breakpoints, you just need to write uh, this breakpoint like SM, MD, LG, XL, and so on. And then su uh, suffix it with a semicolon. So this is the way how you try to style all of these things on different breakpoints it's really very easy in tailwind css however if you go to uh, normal css or vanilla css you have to write media queries but in here it's really very easy uh, if you want me to make a separate video on breakpoints in tailwind css there are certain uh, several things as well that you need to learn if you are working with tailwind css and want to make a responsive website i can make a separate video on that so do let me know in the comment section down below Okay, so now let's head on to the large screen. Okay, so the large screen is uh, beyond 1024 pixels. So we'll expand the screen and see what all changes we are observing. So as we are expanding the screen, okay, there are a lot of changes that are coming in now. First of all, the padding has increased. That's one thing. So let me also increase this as well. Okay, so the padding has increased. So first, uh, let's increase the padding. So here on the large screen, I'll increase the PX to around say 16. And on the large screen, I want PY to be seven, which was initially three. The next thing is in the header section, we are observing uh, some new additions like these navigation items, locations, offering, pricing, about us, login, register. And initially they were not there. Initially, we just have an icon of bar. Uh, but now you can see that bar icon is it has disappeared and instead of that these navigation items has appeared 
so how can we disappear this particular icon whenever we move to the large screen so there is a simple way to do this so there is a display property called hidden so just like how you have display as flex display as grid similarly there is a display as hidden so on the large screen i'll use this hidden property now you can see in here if we go back to our website this is there this icon is there but as you will touch 1024 and above this icon has been disappeared so it's there but it's only appearing on the small screen similarly we'll be creating these as well so first after this a tag i'll create an unordered list and create certain list items so i'll be using the a tag for them i'll keep them empty for now and first one is locations in order to not waste time i've already written them in advance and save it so yeah you can see that they have now appeared similarly we'll create another div for the rest of the two items so that div will contain two things one is going to be an a tag which will say login and then we also have a button which says register okay now we have all the things in here so you can observe uh, since initially we were using a justify between property we have equal spaces in between these elements this looks great uh, we also need to take care of one thing that as we are moving to the small screen these items should disappear but right now they all are appearing so we again need to use the property of hidden so in this unordered list as well as in the next div we'll give it a hidden property so on the small screen it will be hidden but as and when we'll touch the large screen they should appear so we'll use a property of flex instead okay and then also on the large screen i want them vertically in the center let's also give some gapping in between them and i'll keep the text as lg and also i'll keep the font as medium save yeah now you can see that they are appearing fine similarly we'll style this login and register so let me simply copy this styling from here paste it over here and to this a tag this is fine but to this button we also need to add a background color so i'll use a background purple of 900 i'll give the px as 2 py as 1 and also let's increase the font size of it so i'll keep the font as medium and also i'll give a rounded empty property yeah now we can see that uh, we have all the items just like this one in our navigation bar and as i'm decreasing the screen size all those items are disappearing and we have an icon of bar so this is the power of tailwind css it makes responsive designing really very easy now it's time to work on the main section for the main section there is one major observation that we have so initially these two items this image and this text area were kept one below the other but now they are kept side by side so simply in the main uh, section we need to give it a property of flex for the large screen give it a flex property now you would observe that these two items are kept side by side okay uh there's another thing we want this image as well as this text area to take equal spaces on the screen so how can we do that so for that there is a simple property called flex of one if we use it in both the divs that are there uh, which we want to take equal spaces then this should be done so yeah we can see that now equal spaces is given okay but uh, you can see that uh, this image is appearing on the left but we want it in the right why is that so because on the small screen we want this image to be appear on the top and then uh, followed by the text so that's why we have written it earlier but how can we adjust this for large screen so there is a order property that comes with flex so on the large screen since there are just two objects that i have so i have order 1 and order 2 with me so i'll give it this image order of 2 and this text area order of 1 yeah now we can see that now they are appearing uh, perfectly fine this image is on the right and the, all the text is on the left okay also uh, now working on the image side we want it to be rounded also the dimensions have decreased a bit so uh, here i'm going to go inside this image 
and on the large screen i want to modify its height as well as its width so i'll give it a uh, height of 600 pixels and a width of 600 pixels okay and on the large screen i want it to be rounded off full okay yeah now it's looking perfectly fine also i want this to touch the rightmost part uh, so that this image comes just below this register option so initially i have used a justify center property but for the large screen i will use a justify end property if you are getting confused with all the flex property that we are using in this uh, video i have made a separate video on all the properties that are there in flex i would definitely uh, recommend you to watch that video as well if you are getting confused in here okay let's save this and see yeah now we can see that it has adjusted a bit okay this looks great uh next uh, let's see if there are any changes that we need to make in here so yeah this let's switch to remote uh, option is shifted a bit down so that means some margin has been adjusted so initially we have given a margin top of 16 so let's adjust that now i will give it a margin top of around 32 now it's looking fine both are similar so this looks great so we are done building our desktop layout as well and we can see that our website is fully responsive as we are moving to the mobile layout we have a different header and different main layout and we as we are moving to the large screen we have more navigation items and the main sections item are kept side by side okay so this is what we wanted to achieve but there is just one last thing that is left and that is to add these animations to our website so how can we do that so in order to achieve this we are going to use this scroll reveal javascript library so this library helps us to reveal the items or animate our items as and when they enter or leave the viewport so uh, the usage of it is really very simple so first we are going to install it so i'll go within the guide go within installation and copy this script from here and paste it within the head section of our project once this is done let me explain you first what all properties we are going to use okay so we are going to use this delay property so this delay property uh, is basically the time before reveal animation begin so we'll specify what all delay we want in each of the animate like animated object that we want next is the distance that means how far the elements will move when they will appear on the screen uh, if you don't give this distance property you would see that those animation would uh, be appearing just on the same place but we'll make them a bit apart so we'll give it a distance property as well then there is a duration so how long that duration would take in order to completely appear uh, so that would be given and then we have uh, a origin property this is really very important so this origin property helps you to decide from which direction you want our animation to start for example if we observe in here as i'm reloading this image is appearing from the top but the text is appearing from the left so here uh, this origin property would come into play then the last property that we'll use is the reset property so it enables or disable elements returning to the initialized position when they leave the viewport since we want uh, these animation to appear not just once but again and again so we will set this reset property to true okay so uh, whenever we use javascript in a project you must be knowing by now that we need to use a script tag or you can create a separate file for it and uh, attach it over here so i'll give create a script tag and here i'll first create a variable i'll call it uh, say scroll okay and i will use a this scroll reveal javascript library that i have added and within it i will specify all the say the properties that would be ap applicable to both places where i want to use our animation so i'll be using this animation in my image as well as this div that we have so first i'll uh, give them a class name so i'll call it image transform and this one i will call it say text transform you can call it whatever you want you just need to use them later in our script okay so let's give it some properties so i'll first give it a reset as true okay i'll give the duration as say 2600 also i'll give a distance of around say 60 pixels okay then 
what i want is i want this scroll to reveal objects so first is a uh, image so i'll use this so this means that it will search for this particular class name and apply all the properties thereafter then i will specify what specific properties i wanted to take apart from these three so i'll give it a delay of around 400 and i want the origin to be top okay similarly i'll copy this one from here and apply it for text as well so i'll make it text transform i'll uh, give it a lesser uh, delay so i'll give it a delay of 300 and the origin is going to be left and save it let's see fingers crossed uh, they should appear fine let me reload okay it's not still working there is some problem let's figure that out okay so i just figured out the problem we need to also add a dot before these class names so that they're searchable and also the documentation was not updated we need to add the latest version of it let's see now yeah now you can see that our items are getting animated so you can see how easy it was with scroll reveal there are other javascript libraries as well like greensock and many other that you can use but i really like the scroll reveal because it's really very easy to use so whenever you want these appearing effects you can simply import this particular library in your project and animate your items congratulations you have successfully built a fully responsive website and not just that you have also learned how to add animations to it i hope by the end of it you would be saying that it was really very easy and for all the future websites that are you going to create do take the mobile first approach and do not let your user leave your website just because it's not responsive so that's all for this video if you like this video do hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel for more such videos in future and don't forget to drop your comments in the comment section down below what all type of videos you would like to see in the future on this channel. See you in the next one.